Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshe Explain Friend channel. And in the previous installment of this mini-series of Rex and DB2, um, Sebastian Wind from uh, Germany showed us how to import data uh, from the internet. Uh, in that case it was the flights database uh, from some open source uh, website and uh, import it into DB2. And that was highly interesting. And now in this installment, Sebastian is going to show us how to actually access the DB2 database through the spoofy uh, interface and how to write Rex code and connect to DB2. Over to you, Sebastian. Hey, welcome to the Moshix mainframe channel. My name is Sebastian and this video is again about the Rex panel app that is using DB2. It is an app to look up flight data. Maybe when you are working at a ZOS system and waiting for boarding, you can look up your routes and uh, look up uh, the distance. That's what it is about. And I will uh, show you quickly how it works and then we we'll jump right into the Rex DB2. So um, here we are, this is our app. I will start it quickly and show you how it works. We go into one flights. I'm currently in Nuremberg, uh, let's just look up every flight from Nuremberg, so leave the destination uh, empty and there we see there are 48 uh, flights from Nuremberg, um, yeah that's basically it. Let's see um, what the distance is to London and then it will calculate the distance over geo coordinates. And now uh, we will look at how we did it and um, how we got the data into um, Rex. Okay, just for you to know in the last video I've shown how we uploaded the data from the desktop into uh, ZOS and finally DB2. And those were I think three three tables. The data came from openflights.org uh, slash data. So um, when we s want to see what we have in our DB2 I always use the DB2 admin tool because it's uh, way uh, easier, but we will also see how we uh, query the DB2 in this video. So just uh, to give you an overview over the tables, I will show it to you. So let's go into the DB2 admin menu. We uh, type in the DB2 system name. This is a DB2 version 12, so it's quite new. And go into the catalog. We want to display the databases and the database is called FlightDB. Okay, and now we see FlightDB. This was the database that I've um, created in the last video, and now we see uh, which tables are inside the, the uh, database. So there are actually four tables, but one is a clone. This was just for the video in the last one. Uh, we have um, the airlines table, there are all the airlines inside. We can look up the table with a uh, browse. So there we see the, the airline ID, uh, the name of the airline and the alias. Those are sh some short codes um, to verify it. They have a call sign, a country of origin and if they are active or not. So many airlines died already, that's why. Um, we have airports. Um, there are all the airports um, that are known and there's also um, the name, again the airport ID, the city, the country and some codes. But and the most important thing maybe is um, the latitude and longitude because that's what we use later for calculating the distances in Rex. Um, the third uh, table is routes. This was the one I've uh, uploaded in the last video and this is a very important one because it contains all the routes with um, the airline ID. So it's basically an airline has a route and it goes from A to B and that's basically it. And there's also a plane, um, a plane column where you can see which plane they are using. So many routes do have multiple different plane types, so that's that's quite uh, common. Okay, um, that's our DB2 part, okay? And now we try to get the data from DB2 uh, using Rex. The first thing we are going to do is to develop an SQL statement um, that we can use to test our Rex application. So we go into Spoofy, 
you should all know this, um, it's most likely under the option more in ICPF. Go into Spoofy, you have your data sets and you create a new one like Tester, uh, Tester 3, something like this. Um, there will be a new member created and now we are writing our SQL statement inside this one. So I will just create uh, an SQL statement that will work for our uh, DB2 tables. Select uh, star from user uh, bup, 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 bup. airlines let's say airlines uh, where name the name of the airline starts with uh, uh, d -d -d Luf, like Lufthansa something like this this should work actually so let's uh, see if this worked out you go, can go back with F3 and press enter again then you see the output of, of this statement Okay, um, so there are many different airlines that begin with LU and it's all, of course, it's Lufthansa and there are different other uh, airlines. It's, there are 20 airlines that begin with LU. That's nice. Okay, now we go and try to develop our um, racks. Okay, let's create a new member, racks db two and let's just start with our SQL statement we wrote um, boop, boop, boop. select star user airlines okay now um, here we are I've saved the SQL statement that we developed in Spoofy inside the SQL variable and now we are going through the code to um, use the, uh, the DSN Rex interface. Um, the first thing you have to know if you want to use the DSN Rex interface you have to do some um, work in front of that. Most of the time this is already done by the DBAs or sys administrators of your, of your site but of course here we are on a, on a university system and I had to do it all on my own. So um, I've learned from that you have to run um, the job dsntjtm and dsntjmv from the SDSN sample of the DB2 installation. And you have to uh, concatenate the SDSN load of the DB2 installation uh, into your logon procedure. Now this has to be done in order to run this. We have two DB2 systems and at first it, it didn't work for D1 uh, to one to connect because this uh, wasn't uh, wasn't done and now we're going through the code okay we have the SQL statement here um, we connect to the DSN Rex subcom and type in DSN Rex here address DSN Rex now we don't have to put it in front of every um, yeah of every uh, line now then we connect to our subsystem as I said um, we declare the cursors for the output and in the first loop we will uh, save the columns into an array. Now I did this to do it a little bit more dynamically. I could uh, straight save it in some variable but I want to have it in the output in one array vari variable that is holding the length of the, out of the array itself and um, also the column names. So I can print it out uh, right array and it looks Quite nice. We have the column names inside, we have the lengths, and that's what we need to, to print it out later on. Okay, now we see this, um, it will uh, it will save those um, column names. We already seen them in the DB2 admin tool, so the column names are basically the ID and the name and stuff like that. This will be shown here. Then in the 00 uh, uh, spot of the array, I save uh, the lengths. So that's useful to print it out later on. In the second loop we fill those uh, columns with, with data and, and you see it here. Um, it's about the SQL data that is coming out and I do a I perform a strip. So in case um, we have a varchar in DB2 along a uh, array or something and there's only a tiny name of an airline, uh, I strip all those planks out. So I get just the real data. Okay, so um, 
Of course, I also have those say commands in here. So when we execute this, we will see what's uh, happening. Fine. So, and uh, in the end, you also have to uh, disconnect from from everything. So this makes it easier to, uh, yeah. If you rerun it, um, you don't run into problems then. Okay, let's uh, try to execute this. Execute, and let's see. So remember, our SQL statement was we want every airline that begins with LU. And uh, let's go. So I said um, the column names are going to be uh, saved. So it's airline ID and so on, call sign, country, and so on. Okay, let's see uh, what we see. Um, bu 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 so there's one, one record. This is one record um, from 3319, that's the airline ID. Uh, the name is Luftfahrtgesellschaft Walter. It is from Germany, uh, still active. So that's what's inside there. Here we have Lufthansa Cargo, also from Germany. So this looks fine. So the output is quite uh, like in spoofy, just not as beautiful. Okay, this was our Rex application. Um, we were successfully querying DB2 with the decent Rex interface and got the data out of it. So the next video is going to be about um, how to do a Rex callout to also include uh, APIs from the internet in our Rex application. And uh, because coding is a little bit boring uh, when you're doing it alone, so I found an awesome coding partner at the Technical University and the next video will feature both of us and we, we will show you how, how um, to call that API to get live, da live data from the internet. All right, thank you, Sebastian. Interesting, and I have to say, quite impressive and amazing what you, uh, how you do it, and I'm sh I can see you have a lot of experience. And I've been following along as I usually do with uh, guest videos, and I'm sure that a lot of the uh, community members and Moshix mainframe channel viewers are going to uh, have some questions. And uh, you, of course, all welcome to post your questions and comments uh, in the comment section below this video. Um, I'm also going to make available links to where you can find the uh, the source code that Sebastian is showing us in the in the video. And of course, in the next installment in part three, we're going to go a little bit deeper into the API calls, etc. And also have actually a second uh, guest uh, together with Sebastian showing some more uh, interesting ways to access DB2 from Rex and how to design quick and fun applications on the uh, mainframe on ZOS. So, but that video is going to come out in one week. Uh, again, thank you all for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the Moshe mainframe channel yet, now is a good time to do it. Uh, if you like this particular video and want to encourage Sebastian and uh, all the other young developers out there, then I do urge you to press on the thumbs up button for this video and do go check out the code, uh, which I will be linking to in the description below this video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.